It's a lecture on the sower, the seed and the soil, part two. The reception of truth by different classes of hearers. Now, I, I want to ex expose myself. They call it self-exposure. <laughs> I thought I'd never get a girlfriend. I was shy. I was 19 years old when uh, somebody said, man, uh, there's a wonderful girl around here in your church. I, I think you should make friends with her. And I did. And you know, I'll never, remember, I I'll never forget the time when she said to me, she, she loves me. One word changed. My entire, my, my entire outlook on life. I love you. What a message. But then, maybe you also heard those words, I love you. I, will, I want to be with you forever. Then after a few years, your spouse said to you, I want a divorce. I don't love you anymore. This is devastating. Withholding love and kindness for someone really is devastating. Let's continue. Every word of God is pure. We're dealing with words. Every word of God is pure. And we're going to expose ourselves to the words of God. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Isn't this beautiful? He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. This is from the pen of Solomon, Proverbs 30. There is nothing so ennobling and invigorating as a study of the great themes which concern our eternal life. I want to be saved. I want to have eternal life. There's so much to do. My time is up. I haven't touched, really touched research. Christ taught the truth because he was the truth. Isn't this fascinating? His own thoughts, his character, his life experience, were embodied in his teachings. What kind of body language do we reveal? Are we honest? Explaining the seed that fell by the wayside, he said, listen to this. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is very sad. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Matthew 13. The seed sown by the wayside represents the word of God as it falls upon the heart of an inattentive hearer. Inattentive hearer. So may God open your minds. To, to listen to this parable, the words of Jesus. Like the heart beaten path, trodden down by the feet of men and beasts, is the heart that becomes a highway for the world's traffic, its pleasures and sins. Certain things give us a hard heart. We should avoid that. Absorbed in selfish aims and sinful indulgences, the soul is hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin takes away, takes away my empathy, my love, my kindness, and my friend. If you have to overcome a certain weakness in your life, ask God to help you. He's very willing to do it through his Holy Spirit. The spiritual faculties are paralyzed. Did you get this? The spiritual faculties. Are paralyzed. This is what sin does to us. 
and then hear the word but do not understand it. No, they don't understand it. They do not discern that it applies to themselves. This doesn't apply to me. They do not realize their need or their danger. Oh, may God help us to realize our need, my friend, and our danger. They do not understand Christ's love and they disregard the message of his grace as unimportant. You know, we've only got this life to prepare for it, an eternal life. And we should take life serious. As the birds are ready to catch up the seed from the wayside, so Satan is ready to catch away the seeds of divine truth from the soul. So you and I are going to listen to the seeds coming from Jesus. Let's treasure them because the enemy wants to take it away from us. Satan fears that the word of God may be awakened the careless and take effect upon the hardened heart. The devil wants you to be destroyed in hell. God wants to save you forever. And this is a very important parable. Satan and his angels are present wherever the gospel is preached. Did you get this? While angels of heaven endeavor to impress hearts with the word of God, the enemy is on the alert to make the word of no effect. So while you are listening to the word of God, ask him to protect you from Satan who wants to wrong the seed of God from your mind. With a passion equaled only by his malice, Satan tries to destroy the work of the Spirit of God. He doesn't want you to be saved. While Christ is drawing the soul by his love, Satan tries to turn away the attention of the one who is moved to seek the Savior. There's a tremendous battle going on between Christ and Satan. Don't let Satan win your heart and affections. He engages the mind with worldly schemes. He excites criticism or insinuates doubt and unbelief. This is the devil. The speaker's choice of language or his mannerism irritate them when they sit in the church or at a spiritual uh, meeting. The truth they need that God has graciously sent them makes no lasting impression. So when you go to church, ask God to help you to absorb every word. But he will receive the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Seed falling on stony places. We've looked at uh, seed falling on the hard places. Now the stony places. There's a little difference here. The seed sown upon stony ground finds little depth of soil unfortunately. The plant springs up quickly but the root cannot penetrate the rock and find nutriment to sustain his growth and it soon perishes. Many who make a profession of religion are stony ground hearers. The love of self is not subdued. My biggest problem is my selfishness. They have not seen the exceeding sinfulness of sin. We shouldn't take sin lightly. You know, we mock at sin. They have not seen the exceeding sinfulness of sin. And the heart has not been humbled under a sense of guilt. Oh, for a heart that seeks the Lord. Like the rock underlying the layer of earth. The selfishness 
of the natural heart underlies the soil of their good desires and aspirations. Selfishness is our greatest enemy. I want to be satisfied. I don't care too much about other people. This class may be easily convinced and appear to be bright converts, but they have only a superficial religion, only surface religion. It is not because men receive the word immediately, nor because they rejoice in it, that they fall away. As soon as Matthew heard the Saviour's call, he arose immediately, left all and followed Jesus. As soon as the divine word comes to our hearts, my dear friend, God desires us to receive it, grab it, and it is right to accept it with joy. Luke 15 verse 7 says, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents. God is waiting for sinners to repent, to bring joy to his heart. And there is joy in the soul that believes on Christ. It's, it's a dual joy. When you surrender to him, you have a joy. And there's a joy in his heart. But those who in the parable are said to receive the word immediately, do not count the cost. This is serious. They do not consider what the word of God requires of them. Yes, where must I sign? Oh, fine, I'll, I'll come. They do not subject their habits. Listen to this. They do not subject their habits. This is bad habits. Habits of life to the word of God and yield themselves fully to his control. Did you get this? The hot summer sun, which strengthens and ripens the hardy grain, destroys that which has no depth of root. So he who has not root in himself endures for a while. But when tribulation and persecution arises, because of the word, he is offended. Selfishness. Ask God to make you an unselfish person. Selfishness, my selfishness is my greatest problem. And I've got to die daily. Many receive the gospel as a way of escape from suffering. If I receive the gospel, I won't suffer. Rather than as a deliverance from sin. This is why we accept the gospel. Deliverance of sin. They rejoice for a season, for they think that religion will free them from difficulty and trial. No, religion brings trial to develop your character. They may seem to be consistent Christians as life goes on without any problem. But they faint beneath the fiery test of temptation. They faint between the fiery test of temptation. They cannot bear reproach for Christ's sake. Selfishness. When the word of God points out some cherished sin or requires self-denial or self-sacrifice, they are offended. Don't be offended when you follow him. Trials when seen as educators will produce joy. It would cost them too much effort to make a radical change in their life. They look at the present trial and inconvenience and forget the eternal realities. Like the disciples who left Jesus, they are ready to say, this is a hard saying. Who can bear it? John 6. 16. The only hope for these souls lies in the words of Jesus spoken to Nicodemus one night long ago on the Mount of Olives when he said, Except a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. My friend, 
Let us suffer for a while. Let us deny our sinful desires for a while and enjoy eternal life. God wants to save us. Christ asks for an unreserved consecration. Give him everything. For an undivided service, work for him as you've never worked before. He demands the heart, the mind, the soul, and the strength. Self is not to be cherished. Selfishness. He who lives to himself is not a Christian. Live for the one who created you. Love will be revealed in sacrifice. If you care about me, you'll do some sacrifice. The plan of redemption was laid in sacrifice. A sacrifice so broad and deep and high that it is immeasurable. You know, there's a beautiful poem. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their, com but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. It takes effort in every aspect of life to reach and gain some height. Give everything to God who loves you so much. Christ gave all for us. He left heaven, died on the cross. And those who receive Christ will be ready to sacrifice all for the sake of their Redeemer. The thought of his honor and glory will come before anything else. My selfishness must die and Christ must live in my heart. This is the religion of Christ. Anything short of it is a deception. No mere theory of truth or profession or discipleship will save any soul. If we are not entirely his, we do not belong to Christ. These are serious words. Don't lose eternal life for a relaxed Christian experience. Be kind to people. Help them where they need you. This is religion. And when temptation comes to you, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Do you know why there are so many divorces? 50, 60% of the population. When I see somebody, and there's a bit of chemistry, I refuse to deny myself. And I may lose eternal life. My dear friend, Deny that selfish, fallen human nature of yours and live for Christ. He's looking for us to do it. Men lose their strength of purpose and ability to control their desires when they live the Christian life half-heartedly. Do it with all your heart, not half of your heart. The effort to serve both self and Christ makes one a stony ground here, and he will not endure when the test comes upon him. Did you get this? The effort to serve both self and Christ. Serve him, deny yourself, and you'll have a full, beautiful, satisfying life. You know this, every enemy will tell you, man, enjoy yourself. You have regrets. Jesus says, deny yourself. You have that wonderful peace. And one day enjoy eternal life. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. The gospel seed often falls among thorns and noxious weeds. If there is not a moral transformation in my heart, if old habits and practices and the former life is of sin are not left behind, I'm lost. I have to leave these things behind. Self-denial should be the theme of your life for the sake of Jesus. 
And maybe you have a problem just now. The solution is sacrifice your selfish nature. Say no to him. If the attributes of Satan are not expelled from the soul, the wheat crop will be choked. I want to repeat this again. If the attributes of Satan are not expelled from the soul, the wheat crop will be choked. The wheat will be eradicated by the thorns, which will become the crop. Don't be a person of weeds. Be a person of wheat. The briars and the thorns are always ready to spring up. And the work of purification must advance continually. If we do not gain the victory over sin, then sin is gaining the victory over us. Agonize with God if there's sin in your life. Shed tears. Stay with food for a, for a day or two. But gain the victory. Christ specified the things that are dangerous to the soul. The cares of this world. You know, we're so worried about tomorrow. The deceitfulness of riches. I've seen beautiful people becoming selfish because of riches. Luke also specifies the cares on the one hand, riches on the other hand, and the pleasures of this life on the other hand. Satan's got a lot of techniques to get you away, to rob you from your spiritual experience with God. They choke the word, the growing spiritual seed. Remove the things that destroy yourself, you, that destroy your spirituality. The soul ceases to draw nourishment from Christ and dies spiritually. The soul ceases to draw nourishment from Christ, not from self-satisfaction, and dies spiritually. If he ceases to get the words of God into our hearts, we die spiritually, my dear friend. You cannot afford to die spiritually. No social group is immune to the attraction of material interests. <laughs> Poor people can be in danger because of what they want. For the poor, hardship, deprivation and the danger of starvation generate challenges and hardships. Who says, be content with what you have. If you're very poor, you can become materialistic. Oh, I wish, I wish I, I wish I. No, contentment is, is of great value. Godliness with contentment, the Bible says, is a great prize. Communion with God through prayer and a study of his word is neglected. You have to talk to him daily, like you do in your marriage. You have to have communion. They forget that Christ has said, without me, ye can do nothing. Don't try and do anything on your own. Ask God to help you. Give him your plans and say, God, please, bless my plans or cancel it. But I want to do your will. They walk apart from Christ. Their life is not pervaded by grace, by his grace. And the characteristic of selfishness are revealed. What is our greatest danger? Selfishness. Their service is ruined by their commitment to superiority and the harsh, unforgiving traits of an uncontrolled heart. I want to read this again. Their service is ruined by their commitment to superiority. You know, I want to be important. I want to, I want to get compliments. And the harsh, unforgiving traits of an uncontrolled heart. 
One of the main causes of Christian work failure is found here. We want to work for him. But we should look at the danger. Its outcome are so frequently very poor. The love of riches has an infatuating deceptive power. And we all have this problem, not only the rich, the poor as well. Too often those who possess worldly treasure forget that it is God who gives them power to get wealth. They say, my power and my might, my hand, have gotten me this wealth. God has given you the strength to possess what you've got right now. Give him the credit. By the way, you're not an owner, you're just a steward. Their service is marred by the desire for supremacy. You know, I want to be acknowledged. I want to be supreme. And the harsh and lovely traits of the unsubdued heart, it is one of the chief secrets of failure in Christian work. Therefore, its results are often so meager the deceitfulness of riches. I've just repeated this as you've noticed. Instead of developing in man the attributes of God, riches wrongly used are developing in him the attributes of Satan. The seed of the world is choked with thorns. And pleasure for this life. There is danger in amusement that is sought merely for self-gratification. My biggest problem is selfishness and self-gratification. All habits of indulgence that weaken the physical powers, that becloud the mind or that benumb the spiritual perceptions are fleshly lusts which war against the soul. First Peter 2 verse 11. Whatever distracts the mind from God, whatever draws the affections away from Christ, is an enemy to my soul and your soul. Paul by the Holy Spirit writes, They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. This is not a only a warning for wealthy people. It's for poor people like me. Our greatest passion in life is to deny ourselves and let Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, help us to be kind, self-sacrificing people. Satisfaction lies not in satisfying your sinful human nature, but denying it and care for others. But others fell on good ground. Oh, I love the epilogue of this parable. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty, Matthew 13, 8. That on the good ground are they which, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. You've been listening to the words of Jesus. If you allow his words in your life, you'll be a person that has, as it says, your life will be hundredfold or sixtyfold or thirtyfold in kindness to others and your own happiness. Happiness is in dying, in denying selfishness. Our oh, God wants us to be happy. Say no, no, no to the temptations of life. And yes, 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 to the advice of Jesus. And you'll be a very happy person. The good ground here receives the word 
not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God. If I accept the word of God, I accept his character. Life becomes meaningful. Only he who receives the scriptures as the voice of God speaking to himself is a true learner. The good ground hearers, having heard the word, keep it. Whatever you read in the Bible that addresses a problem or whatever, accept it. Don't reject the word because there's power in the word. Satan, with all his agencies of evil, is not able to catch it away. Harbor it in your heart. The soul dwelling in the pure atmosphere of holy thought will be transformed by communion with God through the study of scriptures. Our part is to receive God's word and hold it fast, yielding ourselves fully to its control. Word of God and its purpose in us will be accomplished. We shall no longer live the common life of selfishness, but Christ will live in us. There's no comparison between living for selfish lusts instead of living for Christ that wants to come into our lives. His character will be reproduced in our nature. This is real happiness. Thus shall we bring forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Next time, the invitation to the great banquet. My friend, try it for a week of denying yourself and treasure God's word in your heart. Father in heaven, thank you for speaking to us through your word, through the Holy Spirit, through nature, through kind people. Help us to not to deny ourselves. Take up the cross and follow you and experience a new life every day. This I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.